Good morning. This is Stan J. Catterbone and Vance Media Group at 1250 Fremont Street, Leicester, Pennsylvania, 17603. It's now 3.46 a.m. on Thursday, February 2nd, 2023, Groundhog's Day. Given the current state of affairs again, I need to do another video, an update uh, on the situation as far as my targeting, which is uh, escalated if that can even be done since the last video, but it has escalated uh, everything from the stalking to the harassment to the break-ins, vandalism, theft, and everything else. So I decided to write to uh, President Judge David Ashworth of Leicester County Court of Common Pleas again. So we'll take a few minutes and uh, read the letter here that's going out today in Priority Mail. Dated Thursday, February 2nd, 2023, to Judge David Ashworth, Leicester County Court of Common Pleas, 50 North Duke Street, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, 17602. Regarding probation contract and in-custody care and rehabilitation and the payment of $70,477 for, for the vandalism and thefts. Judge Ashworth. It is unfortunate that, that I must again remind the court of the circumstances surrounding my life. Please review the following. First, my dad was extricated on July 20, 2001 in New York City. Now, if you notice, I got a hat, Sam Caterbone Cleaners hat, done yesterday up at Dollar Deluxe at the Matter Shopping Center. My oldest brother, Sammy, on Christmas Day, December 25, 1984 in Santa Barbara, California, and my youngest brother, Tommy, on April 29th, 1996, in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Summation. Due to the actions and the criminal activity of the foregoing, it is reasonable to prove that every aspect of my life is subject to undue influence, harassment, torture, obstruction, etc., thus resulting in an irreparable harm and injury. This situation, set of circumstances, as outlined here, and all previous fines, reports, and statements is a pres prescription for only one endgame, death or suicide. There is no life action or activity that is immune from the horrendous hate crime. The, this precedent and landmark elements that make this so appalling is that I have never done anything to set these circumstances in motion, but to be right regarding international signal control back in 1987 as well as many other proclamations and forecasts. That being said, it is also widely reported that many targeted individuals and victims of U.S.-sponsored mind control are led to death and or suicide. The Lancaster community at large is guilty of creating, abetting, fostering, and executing this tra tragedy. The fact that local, state, and federal law enforcement induce and encourage this environment of hate is landmark. Now they're flickering my camera. It's funny that uh, the perps changed this letter again. Anyway, they changed it. I'll continue on. 13 items that I cannot obtain but should have according to laws and rules of procedure. One, a cell phone that is activated by a cell phone carrier, YouTube TV. Now, access to my Google Cloud, I, I had that restored. I did that. Re Recertification of my medical marijuana card, which expired November 13, 2021. No doctor will certify me for no reason. Relief and payment of the sum $70,000 for vandalism and thefts. Six, opioids. Vicodin, which was prescribed by Dr. Sullivan prior to Dr. Sparrow for pain relief, which is required for me to exercise my way out of being, a crip being this crippled. Seven, use of my silver sneakers free pass at Brightside Health Club a few blocks away. Eight, relief from the extensive and synchronized community stalking by neighbors. Nine, mandated recommendations for continued graduate studies at Millersville University. Clark Barringer, Lindsay Elser, Ken Ruffner. Ten, refund of the $200 Walmart grocery order of August 21st, 2022, which was never delivered, 
even considering all of my in-person requests and complaints at Walmart. Another itch in my eyes. 11, relief from the computer and electronics hacking. 12, relief from the isolation. 13, relief from the illegal no trespass and verbal notices by bartenders from bars and restaurants in downtown Lancaster. Now I'm going to read an article that was September 13, 2022. Advocates call on House lawmakers to pass comprehensive probation reform. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Monday at the Pennsylvania State Capitol, several organizations called on lawmakers to take up a comprehensive probation reform bill. Senate Bill 913 passed the Senate last December with bipartisan support, and now advocates are urging the House to get it across the finish line. Probation reform is part of a workforce development agenda in Pennsylvania, said Alex Halper, Director of Government Affairs for the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry. Now, here's the problem. First of all, far too many people are put on probation. And second of all, the lengths of probations are way out of line and out of the ordinary with the rest of the country. Now, they do that for a reason. First of all, there it's an institution-wide system where they discourage people from being rehabilitated. The whole system is against the person from coming out of prison, obtaining good work, and continuing his life without crime. The system is against that. Every part of the system. Second of all, it sucks up a lot of money in fines and costs. It feeds the courts. It feeds the probation officer. It feeds the public defenders. It feeds the judges, so on and so forth. So I get into that letter and finish the letter. Then I get into the vandalism and theft. $70,477 vandalized or stolen since 2006, since I came here to live at 1253 Fremont Street. And it lists all the items. I also have my pro se billings in here, which is some... Um, $2.3 million, I believe. The next part of the letter, I give him a copy of what I filed in U.S. District Court yesterday. I took the Pennsylvania Supreme Court case, the Capius case by Lindsay Elser and Judge Nisley, which was stemmed from the false arrest and fabrication and perjury of Ashley Ramirez about the toy sheet that was in my yard where she said I was out yelling at her children about the sheath, when in fact, I wasn't even outside that night. I was inside in my basement, home office, watching TV or sleeping. It was all made up. Anyway, I took that case. And then jiggle my video again. I guess I still have audio. Anyway, I took this, that case to the U.S. District Court in uh, Philadelphia. So we'll see what happens. So that's going to end this video. It's now 3.54 a.m. on Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. This is Stan J. Catterbone and Advanced Media Group, Pro Se and Federal Whistleblower. I'm at my home office, 1253 on my street, Leicester, Pennsylvania, 17603. Thank you and good morning.